So you've been contributing to that retirement annuity for a while now, and you're not exactly sure whether you should exercise the maturity options. So what are those maturity options? You know that you can withdraw one third of it in cash, but you're not sure what takes place with the balance of this money. Does it get invested? And also you're concerned about tax. How does tax affect all of this? Well, this video is gonna guide you on all the elements that you need to know in order to make the key decisions here. Now, I'm Devon Naika, and I help retirees live their best life possible with the money they have. So let's get started because there's a lot that I wanna share with you in this video. First off, we are going to use a capital amount here and I'm using an example with my capital. And I'm gonna assume that the capital that sits inside the portfolio is 3 million Rand. So that's what your, your RA has. That's the value that's inside this retirement annuity. It's just to make my look, maths look easy, but again, you can use the, the, the formula that I'm giving you on the figures that you have. Now you can take a portion of this in cash. So you could access up to one third as a cash amount. Now I'll talk you through that first, and then I'll go through the balance here, which is the two third component. Now on the one third component, what I want you to be very, very mindful of is SARS taxes you on any money that comes into your bank account. So because the one third capital is going to get paid to your bank account, it naturally means one of the elements that you wanna pay very, very careful attention to is tax. Now, using the one third example I'm using here that I have in front of you, you have 3 million Rand capital divided by three to get the one third value, which means the amount that you have accessible here as your one third is a million Rand. Now, the first step to, is to identify how much of tax would you pay on a million rand. And the way to do that is to have a look at what SAR says on a tax guide. Now, you don't have to do any of the calculations. I'm just making you aware and giving you as much information as possible. On the tax guide here, please make sure you're viewing the latest tax guide. I'm using the 2022 tax guide. So make sure you're using something that's current. And this is a free download from the SARS website. So you're scrolling to the section where it actually speaks about lump sum. And here it is. You'll notice here that the retirement fund lump sum benefits table, this is the table that SARS uses. So the first 500,000, the tax is zero. From 500,000 to 700,000, the tax is 18%. Then it jumps up from 700,000 to a million and 50. It's 36,000 plus 27% of whatever is more than a million and 50. And from a million and 50 upward, you see it's 130,500 plus 36% of whatever is more. Now using our example, the 1 million Rand slots into this category here. So because it's in that category, what is the tax? It's 36,000 plus 27% of whatever is more than 700,000. Now I wanna help you with this calculation. So I'll pull up a calculator here uh, to get you going. Nothing for you to do, just following the example. I first wanna determine, or you first wanna determine how much is more than 700,000. So you're taking your million rand, you're minusing 700,000. Because remember the formula says, whatever is more than 700,000 is taxed at 27%. What does that work out to? 300,000. And that 300,000 then is taxed at 27%. So that gives you a total of 81,000. Now, if we go back to the tax guide, is that the total tax here? So we've calculated tax, we've calculated this leg of the formula, the 27% of whatever is more than 700,000. We haven't calculated this, we haven't added that. So you've got to be extremely careful. You now want to add in 36,000 which means the total tax that you're going to pay here is 117,000. 117,000, which means the amount that you will receive is the after-tax amount. It's basically a million rand minus 117,000. That's the amount that you're going to get into your bank account because 117,000 is what's been taken away in tax in this example. Now, you want to ask yourself whether... That's good. You know, I mean, are you comfortable paying that amount in tax? 
And you also want to get some tax planning done ahead of time. Because what if there was a way that I could show you to save the tax? How would that be? Imagine if you could save 117000 How would that affect your life? So getting that tax planning done early is critical. Now, what takes place with the next step? Yeah. Now, I want you to, on this note, please make sure you watch the video twice if you need to, or a few times. I do this on a daily basis, and I'm mindful of the fact that you might be listening to this for the very first time. So just view it a few times to ensure you understand the concepts well. It's going to help you to avoid making mistakes and it's going to save you a fortune in tax if you implement as I show you. So this two-third portion, I'm going to show you on a separate screen here. And now we're working, remember, on the two-third element. Now, there are five different income options that are available. Again, this is at the time of me shooting the video. Just in case there's new options, you want to be mindful uh, of them. So just make yourself familiar that you have the latest information. The first is you would earn an income for as long as you live. So income for life. What it means is if you live to 80, you earn the income to 80. If you live to 100, you earn it to 100. 110, to 100, then the income continues. But in essence, the income is continuing as long as you live. Now, what's the risk here? Only you are protected in this option. It's just you that's protected. Meaning if you have a spouse, your spouse is not protected here. So not the optimal option. Perhaps if you're a single person, this might be something appealing. The second option is you get option one, plus you can add in a spouse. So now you're able to earn an income for as long as you live. You keep earning that income. Should anything happen to you, your spouse now is able to earn that income for as long as your spouse lives. Now, in the event of something happening to you and your spouse, naturally all of this comes to an end because only the two of you are protected. Let's take it a step further into the third leg. Now, I'm guiding you on each of the options. You'll choose the one that's most appropriate to you. And also, this is a very basic overview of them. It's just to give you some foundational learning. Uh, it's based on your personal circumstances that you'll choose something more appropriate. Now, on option three, you can take one or two, plus you add what's called a guarantee. And the guarantee works like this. Assume you are 60 right now. You can buy a guarantee for around 25 years. So that takes you up to 85. Now, in my example, let's assume that at X, you pass away, and at Y, your spouse passes away. So notice, you have a 25 year term. So the insurance company has made a commitment that they'll pay premiums for 25 years, but you passed away at X, your spouse passed away at Y. I want you to see this gap here from Y till the end. So this window period here, the insurance company can now still pay to your beneficiaries. So it could then pass on to your kids. Now, in the event of you or your spouse living beyond 85, that means the income still continues to, uh, to you until whatever age you pass away. But now the safety net is lost because you've used up the 25 years. It means that the income ceases after 25 years. Okay. Next up, option four. You can take option one, meaning you're earning an income for as long as you live. And then you have a lump sum. Uh, I need to explain this one using the capital. So if you reflect here, we said a million rand is your one third option. That means what's left behind to invest is 2 million. That makes up your total 3 million. So we're saying 2 million sits inside here. So here's how this one works. You're earning an income for as long as you live because you have option one. In the event of you passing on, that income ceases. And the same capital that you started off with would then be paid to your beneficiary. I'll say that again. You're going to earn an income for as long as you live. In the event of you passing on, that income comes to an end. So there's no more income. But the same lump sum that you invested in the beginning is what then would be paid to that beneficiary. Now, how is this one possible? Well, behind the scenes, the insurance company is actually taking a life cover for you. So I'll put that in here. They're taking a life cover for you. In this example, the life cover is 2 million rand. 
So notice what happens. You would earn an income. Before you earn the income, you're going to pay tax. Then you're going to pay for the life cover. And then you'll have the balance that's coming into your bank account, which means in the event of you passing on, the insurance company then pays the lump sum. Right? And that lump sum is the payment from the life cover itself. And then we have the fifth option here. And on the fifth option, if you reflect on what would take place here on option one, two, three, four, the insurance company is taking that capital away and in return, they're providing you with an income. Now, if you think about what they would do with that capital, they're going to invest it. So in the fifth option, you're saying that you're gonna invest it. So you would invest this capital and it, the picture looks something like this. So you'd now have this capital that sits here. And again, I'll use the example of the 2 million. You're going to invest it into some place. The place that you invest it will give you some kind of return. So that provides you with some kind of return. Now, on the bottom end, you need to take an income from this. But what's different with this option is that income can change every year. So every year you get to adjust that income. There is a scale, however. So the income cannot be less than 2.5% and cannot be more than 17.5%. So the income can't be less than 2.5% of 2 million, can't be more than 17.5% of 2 million. Now you wanna strike a balance here because if you take too high an income and there's not enough return coming in, then this capital can start to deplete. It can diminish. At the same time, if you're getting the right advice and you're taking an appropriate income, you then can protect the capital. Or better still, you can grow the capital. So this one allows you a lot more flexibility because you can change it, but you want to be mindful that here you're doing the investing. Only one other thing I want to make, mention to you for this one is unlike the other options, I didn't talk to you about costs. Here, 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 here. I didn't speak about costs because the insurance company is able to retain your capital. But in this particular option, the insurance company doesn't retain your capital. In fact, they sort of become like a bank account for you. So the money is invested with the insurance company, but it doesn't belong to them. Meaning at the time that you pass on, everything that's inside here then gets payable to your family, whoever you've listed as beneficiary, let's say. Which means now we need to see how does the insurance company make a profit if everything is paid? How do they do that? They do that by charging you some costs. The costs are minimal. Again, if you get the strategy done correctly, you should put yourself in a position where you are growing this capital or even sustaining it. Again, based on your circumstances and how well the setup planning happens. So these are your options that are available. Quick recap. We said from your pool of capital, you can take up to one third in cash. You wanna be mindful that this amount is subject to tax. Whatever is left behind here would be invested. How is it invested? We looked at five different ways in which that money can be invested. Remember the income that you are receiving from these five ways would then be taxable. Great, so I hope the video has been helpful for you. I encourage you to watch this video again. 